Salam Sheikh. Salam Sheikh. Uh, Salam. Jumma Karim. Sheikh, I have started doing muraqabah, but however, I find the instructions so complex. I don't even know if I'm doing it right. If you go to the website, step one, you make sure you have wudu, you sit down, you pray your suratul wudu, you make your istighfar, be suratul ikhlas and sit and say, I want to connect my heart with my shaykh. That wasn't complicated at all. And then sit there and breathe that I want to connect my heart with my shaykh. So you do it very easy at first, I just want to sit and connect my heart with the shaykh and say, Sayyidi, I, I know that you're in front of me, I don't need to see you because that's from my nafs. But I'm asking Ya Rabbi for, for the sake of you, for the sake of Sayyidina Muhammad that led me to always be in the presence of my shaykh and I feel my shaykh in front of me, I know that he's in front of me and from that light from Allah sent into your heart that reflect that light onto my heart. And then you try to sit in that position visualizing that the shaykh is there. And then you slowly try to make the connection, every day you practice it, practice it then you can hold your thumb to feel the beat of your heart so that you have a heart connection. And then if you're going to do a breathing exercise then you're going to be breathing in the zikr of Allah and zikr of who. Will you breathe out who, breathe in who, focus on your breath and asking that you're in the presence of the shaykh. And then there's all the different forms of meditations that begin to open up. But the most basic is very easy and just requires a discipline. So that's why we said after the salah is best because you're in wudu, you made your salah, everything is nice and clean, you give your salam, salam and then sit down say, Ya Rabbi send that light into my heart. Because you just gave salams, Salaamu Alaikum Yuhan Nabi wa Salaamu Alaikum Ibadullahi Salihin. Ya Rabbi these ibadullah have their light to reflect into my heart and then let me to be with my shaykh and to send the light into my heart and he will then begin to treat and connect you. You feel more and more of a connection and the fires of the shaykh begin to, to feel the heart and then connect you up the chain of the shaykhs until they connect you to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Alaikum As Salaam Please help, Please me. help me, I want to do khalwa but I don't know how. You want to do what? Khalwa. Oh. Yeah again that's you know the same system that we have to go from step A then to step you know A, B, C, D and then Z. <laughs> so you, 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 you can't come in and say, hello, I'm, 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 I want now all the way to the Z because you haven't done the step A. So the, the, the khalwa is not a process that you just go in and you know miraculous things happen and you leave. The, the khalwa requires that you've been trained in the ways of malakut, that you've been trained in the ways of reaching to light, being dressed by light, understand how to, to make the connection with the shaykhs, how to do your muhasaba, how to do all of these things so that when you go behind 40 days of isolation that's all you'll be doing. You'll only be meditating, you'll be given you know very sort of heavy wazifas and awrads and recitations to recite and, and in large amounts. And that's so that you can go deep into that process of, of, of the world of light and… But if, if you're not trained in any of those basics then that… Can you imagine what a horrific experience that would be? One, you wouldn't know what you'd be doing for 40 days. Two, you, you'd be under all sorts of attacks that you don't even understand how to get out of them. You don't know how to get the madad and support and the energy to come because the first khalwa is the grave. The first khalwa and that's why Nurmuhammad dot com is our website. It's an immense resource. So you go to the search button and you just type khalwa and there's I think at least four articles on the realities of khalwa. So the first khalwa and the first level of khalwa is like your death. Allah is going to introduce you to your grave, the azab and the punishment of the grave, how to be relieved from the punishment of the grave. Well, all of that then requires that you were trained on how to make your connection, how to bring the fayas, how their energy will come because when you're in the azab of the grave means that everything is attacking you.
every type of punishment is trying to come to you and to, to, to be attacking you and all your bad characteristics, Allah will animate them to be creatures that are trying to eat you. So it's not something easy and it's not something that should be done without being trained for it. So when the student is trained then the order has to come from Allah to Prophet and at that time Prophet will then tell the shaykhs that this one has to go into khalwa, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Shaykh, um, salam does where I live have an effect on my heart and soul? If my neighbors are of bad character, will it affect my personal actions? If so, should I move somewhere better? Ya Allahum Salli Wa Sallam Muhammad Wa Sallam Muhammad No, yeah, yes and no but in reality no because you are living exactly where Allah placed you to live and everything has a motivation to build your energy. Uh, if Allah wanted us to be in, in a very tranquil place and very beautiful place and very easy place, you wouldn't have been motivated to do any training because you would have taken that for granted. So everyone seems to be exactly where Allah wanted them to be for them to hear this message and this reality. And some are in a more difficult environment which I guess would motivate them faster in which on how to build their energy, how to build their connection, how to really get their madad because there is nowhere safe on earth right now. And the, the more you try to run away to somewhere unfortunately you're packing yourself too. So Allah doesn't change a condition of a people until they change what's within themselves. So it's more important to focus on myself, make my connection, make the energy, make the, the, the strength that Allah wants me to have. At that time when light is dressing me and blessing me, that guidance of light then is, is directing me. At that time then there may be a different coordinates for the servant in which their usefulness would be placed somewhere else. But just to, to run for the sake of running, I'm, I'm still running with myself and wherever I go it's going to still be my character and I'll just have my character there and, and it doesn't really change anything. And we said now and this is a, a, a big illusion people like running to the countryside, I'll go to the countryside. Uh, anyone who watches television and watches movies knows that uh, you know that there are 10,000 other criminals hiding in the countryside. People who don't want to be known and don't want to be around the police, well they're hiding in all those areas. People who are making drugs and harming people, they're in those bushes and in the wild and in the countryside because they don't want to also be around you know authority. So it's not a necessarily a safe place to go because you'd be surrounded by all sorts of other types of people who have a more nefarious reason for being in those areas. So everyone is exactly where Allah wants them. But they're not in the condition in which Allah wants them. So the improvement of oneself, there's no way to escape that by, by running here or going here or going there. The most important is just to improve myself right now. Now whether I survive or not that's up to Allah But what Allah is concerned is that you improve yourself because at least you're improving yourself for your grave. And everybody has to return to the grave and, and to the heavens inshaAllah. So they should do that as a purified uh, process and to purify ourselves inshaAllah. Sayyid there are a few questions related to people asking, how do I change my bad character to good character? And this question is, may Allah bless you dear Sayyidi, I have lost all focus in salah and I'm afraid of praying because all I feel is hypocrisy. Please can you help me navigate me out of this? Barakallah fi. Alaykum as salaam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. That's good to feel the hypocrisy because they said that's the, in the levels of the nafs of… Uh, in the levels of the training of the nafs. That once you leave amara, lawama is exactly that state. Because amara doesn't even believe he's a hypocrite, thinks whatever he's doing bad is actually good. Does every type of bad thing and he says, no it's actually very good. So lawama, when Allah wants to levitate or elevate the servant, that's when they know that, you know of course everything I'm doing is, is hypocrisy, I'm, I'm trying to be good, I know I'm not good, I know I'm angry, I know I have all these characteristics and that's a good sign. So it's a, of course to continue to pray 
and uh, continue to give and be charitable, continue, continue to live a life of service, going and serving and doing things in which you don't expect something back. That's a different type of character. So when you start to do selfless and not selfish acts, once you become selfless in which you're doing things not expecting anything to come back. I'm not giving to get a maqam, I'm giving because I love Sayyidina Muhammad I want to feed people not to, to be known that I'm feeding but I want to feed people for the sake of making Allah and Prophet I'm happy with me. So we begin to do all of these and then I take again the meditation, the muhasaba and all these practices. As soon as I do my muhasaba and accounting of a, a, a great part of my hypocrisy will start to become known to me of what am I really a hypocrite about? You know why am I taking this path and I have so much anger? Why am, why am I doing this and I'm hurting so many people? And then you cry and then you have to cry to Allah, don't let me to die as a munafiq. I thought it was good, I know I'm bad and I know I'm hurting people, I know that I'm, I have a bad character and, and people may see me as something good and that's why you read these not, these not sharifs and these nasheeds is that they're crying and saying, people see me as something good but you know yourself and we know ourselves. So then they cry all night, make me to be better, make me to be better than what people think of me, inshaAllah. As Alaikum Sayyidi If we try to help someone in, in family or friends who has anger problems and help them by reminding your teachings, do we still get affected by their negative energy? Wouldn't that be bad manners not to help someone who needs our help? What is the safest way to help them? Shukran. The best way is just to send the videos and say the teacher has a lot of teachings and this teacher has a lot of teachings on energies and the reality of energies. But we don't want to use the teaching as a weapon that every time we get into a family argument, oh you're, you're, you're doing like what the shaykh said, you're nafs amara person, watch out you're nafs amara person. And then we start to use the, the teachings like a weapon or, or, or like a beating onto each other. Then the person will completely sort of turn away from the teachings and doesn't want to be identified with all these and you don't want to point out the character flaws of other people because this is a path in which I have to work on myself. So if the person can be clever enough to word it in a way that these are these teachings, these are about energy teachings. <laughs> what happened? Ooh. Ah, that blew out the microphone, the speaker in my ear. That was scary. Where, where, it took away my… where were we? <laughs> yeah, <don't worry. laughs> yeah, that was it. I think maybe that was a deflection. Maybe Shamash has something he didn't want to talk about and decided to make a very loud uh, noise to, to completely change the subject. Yeah, so the best that if we have a clever way to, to disguise that not in the middle of an argument that you need to watch this video, you have anger issues that would be very difficult. But to say to the shaykh, I'm, I'm working on my anger and all these energy things and I find this to be very fascinating, why don't you take a look at it? Then you know if we can be clever in trying to share it, fantastic. Anybody who can share the feed on their groups, on their, their chats and on their WhatsApp, again this is the greatest form of, of, of da'wah. Not everybody has to teach this reality but everybody can share it. They can share it, they can put it on the WhatsApp groups, they can put it on groups on Facebook and then send it here, send it there and uh, they can support, they can be of service, they can uh, donate their time. A everyone has an ability to partake in it and make it a part of themselves. Not just to be a spectator on the sidelines just watching but make it to be something that's active in your lives. If they're in Pakistan they can go to help for the, the programs there, they can try to uh, do some sort of support. Anyone in the world can do transcribing and, and transcribe for the videos. So the videos have a script in different languages, there's transcribing for the articles. There are tech people who are in great need for just upgrading the app, upgrading all of the, the technologies that we're using. And so, there's so many different ways 
for people to get off the sideline and to make it something very active because this world is changing very fast and very dramatic. And there's nothing more fearful than to know I'm not doing anything and I see all this azab is coming and what's going to be my condition? And that, that's a fear that everyone has with every email that's coming in. But we have an ability to change that, that you know the, the people that are involved they donate all their time. There are these gentlemen who are, are putting these shows together, producing, coming and doing zikr for you and putting on the, the, the Facebook articles and the people who are editing books and, and putting the app together. Every aspect of what's being done is being done by people who volunteer for the love of Sayyidina Muhammad And I'm sure that with that service and with that love that they have for Prophet they sleep good at night. They say, Ya Rabbi, I tried my best, Wallahi I tried my best Ya Rabbi. If I can do better, inspire me to do better, if I could do more tell me how I can do more. I'm trying my best with that rida and with that satisfaction that I tried my best, leave the rest then to Allah to save us through whatever calamity and difficulty is coming. But when your inner core and inner soul knows, I really didn't try anything, I, I didn't do but give them five dollars and I keep watching the videos and I'm not doing anything. Then yes, you, you have probably an inner panic and inner fear and inner inner excitement of what's happening and that's the call. That's the call for everyone to, to get off the couch and participate. Be active, spread the word, uh, participate, try to, to be of service, try to think of something that you can do for the tariqah, for the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and to feel good at night alhamdulillah. I now feel that you know definitely Prophet Prophet's nazar inshaAllah to be upon us, we're trying our best. That's all that uh, I'm sure that is wanted from us is that we tried our best and the rest is in Allah's hands inshaAllah. As Alaykum Sayyidi Wa Alaykum As Salaam wa What can I do to not be so sad or angry with a person who is withholding my children from me because I became Muslim? I'm a revert from Catholicism. Hmm. They're withholding your children from you because you, you accepted Islam. Uh, InshaAllah Allah is great that you know have good character, love of Sayyidina Muhammad and I, I don't think the Catholic countries would allow that legally so I don't think it, it, is that legally possible that somebody can, can block you from seeing your own children and uh, that, that's something that you have to email us so I, have, I can have more understanding about that but the general rule is that you know that the, the dispelling of, of uh, whatever the media has, has put into the hearts and minds of people and not to be extreme, to be soft, to be accommodating and, and to show that this way that I've accepted of tariqah and Sufism is a way of love and muhabbat. And the shaykh has a book in which he teaches the love of all the Prophets and you can't complete your heart without the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and uh, if anyone wants to go to Medina for Umrah, you, ha you have to visit and give salams to Sayyidina Isa salam at Raza Sharif, the fourth spot for the grave in the maqam of Sayyidina Muhammad There's a fourth spot there and that spot is reserved for Sayyidina Isa salam. So anyone going to Medina knows there's no time. So then Sayyidina Isa salam is always in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad So it's deeply uh, in, entwined within our belief and within our religion, everything, the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and the love of Sayyidina Isa salam. So it's just a matter of educating people and Allah puts us in difficulties. Uh, by you know coming to the path to be patient in that difficulty and try to resolve with the best of character inshaAllah. But email us at helpme at nurmuhammad.com inshaAllah. As Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Being kind and merciful and good character with respect to our children is important but what about discipline? Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. InshaAllah discipline is very important. So you have to like uh, email help me at nurmuhammad.com 
And discipline is, is uh, important, setting guidelines and rules and, and a firmness in belief and understanding is uh, essential. But uh, violence doesn't solve anything, everything is with love and muhabbat and, and understanding and getting the children involved at a young age to watch the zikr, listen to the teaching, to allow people to do whatever they want and then at 15 and 16 say, here Shaykh my, my kid just doesn't listen to anything and now uh, good luck please, please help them. It, that, that won't work because everyone is conditioned. So the conditioning is from you know childhood that watch the zikr, participate in this zikr, please this is our way, come and pray with me and it's time to pray and you give them incentives. So you pay the children to pray with you and you pay the children to fast with you in Ramadan. And that's exactly what Allah did with all of us, everyone came and did their fasting because they were promised paradise and that Allah would give them immensely beautiful gardens in paradise. And then everybody says, okay well I'll fast you know for 30 days of fasting then I, I can get a nice paradise, I, I'm willing to do it. So that same mentality Allah then says, why you don't do it to your kids? Give them gifts, give them incentives, make it to be so beautiful. If Christmas is such a big deal for one day, we have 30 days. Make our Ramadan more glorious than what they do, put lights everywhere, gift every day, give cash in your pocket dispensing to everyone. And you know they, they feel that it's so marvelous, it's, it's a wonderful time, the family's all getting together and gifts are being you know given to everyone. So it's a matter of making it to be beautiful and incentive, give the children an incentive and motivation. And as they grow older they say, oh I don't need it then, I'm, I'm, of course I'm going to fast, it's, it's Ramadan. So inshaAllah it, it adheres to their heart because you condition them inshaAllah. Sayyidi, what is the process of releasing the karma one is undergoing? Yeah, this from other beliefs or, or this something different? The, the destiny of what's written for people and what they inherited from their family lineage, then it's all through tawbah, istighfar and good character and, and good actions. So that's why then the tariqahs, awrads are making istighfar all day long, all day long at the beginning of the day making lots of istighfar. The astaghfirullah alazim wa atubu alayk is a tremendous cleansing for me, for my family, for all those who, who didn't ask for forgiveness. Once my istighfar cleans me then it begins to clean all my children and my community, my family. That's a tremendous cleansing all day long, then my good deeds and my good actions they come in my life to cleanse every type of difficulty and my charity. Nothing is more powerful than the charity of insan. We said before that when, when a person dies and they meet Allah, Allah's saying in Qur'an the first thing their soul will ask Allah, let me go back to give all my wealth in charity. Not that can I go back and make up my prayers. Can I go back and, and do a couple more hajj, can I, can I go back and, and you know fast more Ramadan but the, can I go back and give everything in charity to be from Salihin? Why? Because it had an immense reality on the purification of the soul and that's what Allah wanted for us to understand is that purify your soul, purify and perfect your character. All of that saves us from every type of difficulty. So, and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad with all that good character and then the immensities of making salawat and durood al-sharif on Sayyidina Muhammad Again then there's a shield that is not, the badness cannot penetrate that shield of muhabbat and love and good character inshaAllah. Sayyidi a few people ask the same question, they're basically asking uh, um, should we be reading Dalal al Khairat daily even if we're not in this tariqah? So again a few questions a few people have been asking. Yeah for, well let me ask you a, a question, why you're not in the tariqah? <laughs> you're, li you're listening to us, you're taking from the teachings, why don't you first come to the tariqah? 
that's one and two definitely read Dalal Akhirat, it has an immense reality and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad that you have to think to yourself, the one whom guides and there is no guidance except from Allah That one who guided you to listen to these teachings, to listen to this turuq, to listen to this reality, there must be a reason other than an entertainment. So that, that reason is important for the connection to the heart of Sayyidina Mahdi so definitely do their wazifas, do their awrad, open your heart to, to their presence, learn how to do the muraqabah and the muhabbat, do the, the, the dalal khirat for the connection and the power that it brings from Bahr Qudra and so alhamdulillah do all the practices inshaAllah. Read the bayah to the Naqshbandi silsila is like wudu that is water upon water that as many times as you make wudu it doesn't do anything harmful, it just puts more wudu and more water and more lights upon you. So you can take the bayah as a tabaruk and a blessing that uh, I'm with a living shaykh right now and this is my you know, living shaykh but I also want the tabaruk and the blessings of taking bayah and Naqshbandiya under the Sultanate of Sayyidina Sultanul Awliya Ma Shaykh Abdul Faiz al Daghestani, Sultan Awliya Shaykh Muhammad Nazim Haqqani and the representative and the 45th Shaykh Mawlana Shaykh Muhammad Adil and the barakah of these immense awliya like Mawlana Shaykh Isham Kabani, Shaykh Adnan Kabani and say that Ya Rabbi want from their fires and their blessings and alhamdulillah. So, yeah. Again, someone just asked again, so they can read the Lil Khairat without ijazah for everyone? Shaykh, we have it on the app, <laughs> it's an ijazah. So that's, the, that's one of those questions that keep coming in, I don't understand them. If they gave us an ijazah to make an app that goes out to almost probably 25, 30,000 people now, that's the ijazah. The fact that they made an app under Naqshbandiya Tariqah. And the, the one who made the app has uh, ijazah from, uh, has an ijazah means then it has an ijazah. So anyone who clicks on that app, you have an ijazah, start reciting. And the, the awrads and the zikrs and the bayah and, the, and watching the zikr, everything. All of it is under ijazah and you have an ijazah to do that ijazah. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. <laughs> yeah, alhamdulillah. So it's all, it's all authorized. So it's not something you're finding and, and just Googling it. When you come to an authorized location and you use the, the, these, these, these items from this authorized location, it's authorized. Go right ahead and indulge in it. But most important, make your connection with us and email us at help me at nurmuhammad.com and say, the shaykh I'm in this tariqah, this tariqah, I'm taking Naqshbandiya for barakah and just recognize me and so alhamdulillah you've made it an established relationship and water upon water and light upon light and may you always be blessed and everybody be blessed and all of these are running to the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad So everything is Muhammadiyoon and we said in the last days all the tariqah names will be surrendered and the only name that will be present is Muhammadiyoon. Imam Ali as salam that holds the secret of all tariqahs holds the real secret of all tariqahs now he's not known as Naqshbandi, he's, he's Muhammadi. Imam Ali has his own name, doesn't need to be under somebody's name. And Imam Mahdi is Muhammadiyoon and he's coming with the family crescent and the family reality and he doesn't need to be under anyone's name, that all names are under his name inshaAllah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. We're good. I think we kept everybody entertained for a long time now, inshaAllah. <laughs> Allah, Allah so bless everyone, bless everyone. We got to cut before Haji Shamash uh, sneeze again and, and scares the heck out of me. That microphone of mine picked it up very strong, inshaAllah. Allah bless you, dress you, keep everybody safe till the, tomorrow night, inshaAllah. And then we see if we can connect tomorrow night and, uh, and uh, Jummah Mubarak to everyone and uh, the love of Sayyidina Muhammad inshaAllah to grow more and more into our hearts. Allah give us a light in which to see the beloved birth of Sayyidina Fatima Salam al Batul, the immense light and reality of Holy Qur'an. And I recommend that people read the article we have on, on the secret of Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem and the reality, the reality that Allah Ya Allah Bahaqqa Fatima Salam, 
يا الرحمن بحق الإمام الحسن يا الرحيم بحق الإمام الحسين and the reality of Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim and what immense lights and blessings run through this family's gift and the reality that Allah gave to all creation known as Ahlul Bayt of Sayyidina Muhammad that Allah dress us from those lights and bless us from her holy birth and that give us a life in which to see the night of that birth which I, I believe is the 20th of, of the month coming in and uh, alhamdulillah and like you preserve us to see that night and that day and to be blessed and dressed by it inshaAllah. Bi hurmati Muhammad Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.